Oh. Welcome back. This is the Now Morning Show, and we are so happy to be. I always enjoy when we are spread out like this, you know, <laughs> taking up the entire set. And over the past few weeks, we have been speaking about the solutions to addressing some of the problems that we have been experiencing in our communities with regard to socioeconomic conditions impacting our communities, particularly impacting our young men. Well, today on the program, we have the Honorable Minister. Uh, Shamfa Kajo, the Honorable Shamfa Kajo, Minister of Sport and Youth Affairs. Welcome, Minister. Welcome to the Now Morning Show. Thank you, Lisa. Good Thank to have you. Me. Good morning to everyone. Good and morning. Good morning. Today. It's a pleasure to be here. So we're talking about the Empower program. So mm -hmm. we're going to jump right in. Tell us exactly what is the Empower program. Empower TT is a program that was developed by the Ministry of Sport and Youth Affairs to focus specifically on empowering young men. So the word Empower is a play on the word E-M-P-O-W-E-R, Empower. And uh, we felt like over the years, much uh, focus had been placed on empowering women. We would have been brought up in a setting where uh, we have all these programs geared towards strengthening women, helping them in their development, a whole uh, feminist agenda that would have taken place <laughs> for a long period of time. And uh, being a young woman that would have uh, come out of those types of programs, I felt like we we're leaving the boys behind or leaving the men behind. Just as women need to be developed, boys need to be developed and empowered also. In the Ministry of Sport and Youth Affairs, we focus on the age group 16 to 29 as it relates to youth empowerment. So we would have done a program called the LEAP program, where we train young people in getting ready for the world of work, personal development, professional development. And it, that impressed upon us how important it is to separate, the, to pay some specific attention on the young men. In our own families, we are brought up differently, trained mm -hmm. differently. I know in my family, the girls were uh, guided and protected and supervised, yes. over-supervised. <laughs> and the boys had the opportunity to pretty, pretty much lime in the streets, mm -hmm. go to the beach on their own and do those type of things. Uh, if the boys were not excelling at school, it wasn't so much as a problem as if the girls weren't excelling. So uh, there is something that needs to be changed in how we are cultured, in how we train our families and our, our young men. And I think that we've seen the implications uh, over the years by uh, the declining level of productivity among boys in schools. Uh, especially in certain communities and from certain backgrounds. So we decided to develop this program. A matter of fact, in Grenada, there is Empower Grenada. So I liaised with uh -huh. uh, Minister Kate from Grenada and yes. we, we worked on developing this thing. I took it and go in a, I went in a different direction along with the team in the ministry to develop Empower TT and to make it, su make it suited to Trinidad and Tobago. So we have four components in the program. And the first component is about education. We've developed the program on four uh, tenets, educating the young men, helping them to get the necessary life skills, guiding them as to what do you want to do with yourself, your life. So there's a career guidance a component, and then we have mentorship. So the first one is the education part that treats with uh, uh, the M zone. So mm -hmm. we've created these male friendly zones where we turn your community center or basketball court or right. side of the street into a launch type setting so that the young men will feel comfortable to, to share their story. So we've, like created, a a, yes, yeah. we've created a platform. Uh, on the program we have uh, ambassadors and we have masters. So the ambassadors are the young men mm -hmm. who uh, the people in the community look up to and they help us to get more young men in, right. the youth in the community. The masters are the experienced men. So we have former commission of prisons, we have uh, the commission of police, we have uh, Dr. Raj Kumar, we have so many people, Mr. Arnold Best, we have uh, uh, Nigel Edwards from uh, UTC, a host of uh, different men from different backgrounds. We have uh, Jaiga from the radio, yes, right. uh, John Wayne Benoit, so right. a nice mix. And this is not the brainchild of the ministry only. I would have approached uh, Los Gens TT because I saw the wonderful work that they were doing in male uh, development through their programs on social media. So we got together and we started developing this program. So we used their brain power also. So it's a partnership between the Ministry of Sport and Youth Affairs 
and those gents uh, TT. So mm -hmm. I was speaking about component one. Yes. So we've done. Uh, <laughs> you seem so excited and yeah. passionate. Yeah. You can see you <laughs> dripping with the passion. Because for it's this a program. dream about something yeah. and think about it. And we have been hesitant to roll it out because it had never been. Uh, we hadn't seen it done before from the ministry, yeah. so we had been hesitant. And as we reached out and interacted with the different stakeholders, and everybody got excited. Uh, ministry of Social Development, Ministry of Child and Gender Affairs, and every ministry uh, um, who's interested sent a different representative so we can work and build it, build mm -hmm. it together. And they're all yeah. volunteering their time, these ambassadors and, um, and the masters. Yeah. From doctors, they come out and speak about sexual health, um, male reproductive health, mm -hmm. uh, the different problems that men face. Mm -hmm. One interesting part of the M zone is I was not allowed to be in the room as a woman because the men <laughs> wanted the opportunity. See, to that's why Rokas is sitting next to us. It only makes sense. It only makes, and I was going to ask about that because you know, oftentimes yeah. that uh, um, the ministers and the, and the mm -hmm. people who work in any ministry tend to well, um, have to be a part of the situation, mm -hmm. whether it's for optics or whether it's for actual mm -hmm. um, running of the event. So, is it completely male run? So it's 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 a difficult thing to develop this thing in your head and not be able to feel the pulse in the room. Yeah. So I can attend the M zone, uh, do the introductory speech, but then I must leave because mm -hmm. I'm a woman. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and that was one of the requirements. We had Errol Fabian, who was the uh, host in right. the, the original um, set of um, M zones. Uh, and we mix it up as we go along, but the young men were particular they are uncomfortable mm -hmm. about sharing their experiences with women in the room. So the women had to move all the way to the back mm -hmm. yeah. or just exit the room. So I had to watch it over social media. So, um, you know, considering the culture of uh, the male mentality, that kind of mm -hmm. macho way, how oftentimes men are told, you know, like, you can't go, you can't speak about your problems, you can't um, right. voice exactly. and, you know, because it, it shows weakness, right. right? How do you encourage young men to become a part of that program? So we have a platform called, one of our topics for the M Zone is called Challenging Toxic Max Masculinity. And in each M Zone, we'll cover that. What it is, what's your concept? Or what was told to you as it relates to being a man? And we then discuss toxic max masculinity. Mm -hmm. So the men in the room I experienced, that we have also social uh, psychologists, uh, from Ministry of Social Development to help us to identify problems where, that we can't see with the naked eye to provide follow-up assistance to these young men. And the platform, the environment, the setting is in such a way so that they are comfortable mm -hmm. to uh, share their stories. So if somebody's sharing a story and they don't want it to be recorded, they can say so. Right. You know, So uh, we try to create a, a comfortable place for them to be. And, and really share their stories and the older men would give the advice and share their experiences also. So I think we're on a fifth or sixth M zone. We started mm -hmm. in February mm -hmm. and then we had the whole COVID situation. We How did COVID impact the whole right. uh, rollout of the program? When we developed this program, we had catered to having 40 young men uh, per session. On the first day we had about 80. And then we moved to 120 something young men. So it was catching on and people were tuning in online and coming to the different M zones. And then COVID hit us. Uh, we thought about de delivering it uh, in a virtual format yeah. during that period when we weren't allowed to uh, congregate, congregate at all. Yeah. And we felt it was missing something. You had to feel the pulse. Mm -hmm. These young men are not going to type in their yeah, problems. Yeah. <laughs> it's already so difficult to get the feelings out of them. Yeah, yeah in the uh, personal setting. So we decided to wait. And I'm glad that we did because as soon as we got to go to, have tw to congregate in numbers of 25 or less, mm -hmm. we jumped right at it. And we are now uh, doing M zones with 25 or less participants mm -hmm. but we're also uh, recording or carrying it live carrying it live streaming on Facebook and Instagram and so on yesterday on Monday we had uh, the M zone on sexual education and that's a topic that you wouldn't expect men to be open about but these young men were very very they were energized they were excited they were eager to share and I had people who tuned in mm -hmm. uh, virtually mm -hmm. messaging the following day saying, mm -hmm. we can't wait for the you next know, you one. You know, you probably tapped into something really profound because I've been part of a number of programs 
in communities. And what we found is that you would start with a large number and then mm -hmm. it dwindles, it dwindles yeah. down to mm -hmm. probably eight. So you might start with 50 and end up with eight. But you're saying the opposite. You're saying you started with eight, you know, you're 100 and something. What do you think is the cause? What is the reason that the young people, that the young men especially, are tapping into this particular program? I think we're using the, um, the assistance of young men who they want to be like. So I think liaising with uh, or partnering with uh, Los Gens TT and other groups, because we reached out to the groups that have uh, male programs in the mm -hmm. community, so right. in the Maloney area, the basketball group and so on, right. and they brought their participants and everybody would tell somebody else. It's about taking the talks to them. So we take the talks to their communities. When really we went to Tobago, we went to yeah. Barcode. So right. we shut down Barcode <laughs> for the day. And you know where Barcode is, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're passing along Milford Road and you're seeing this big gathering at Barcode, yeah. we didn't stop anybody from coming in. Once right. you're a man, you yeah. want to hear, come on in. Right. And so it was set up in such a way so it would be not just at schools and community centers, but at the basketball court where you usually congregate, at the bars in your area, mm -hmm. to make it comfortable. We set it up in a lawn style, so you feel like I'm sitting in a living room somewhere and I'm just sharing and right. sharing. But with regards to the doing it online now mm -hmm. and the live streaming and all that, does that affect the way that people express what they have to express? No, because we have an in-studio or a live audience that's already going to start the question. Okay. Now, we worked with MIC. Right. So MIC, um, the MIC cohort is made up of young men who went to high school, didn't get their subjects, uh, and ended up uh, deciding, okay, I'm going to learn a trade, mm -hmm. and I'm glad that the government provides that other avenue for those young men. So they are sort of starting over and looking for a proper way to journey from uh, boyhood into manhood. Right. So they already have their guidance counselors at school. So we worked through the guidance counselor, the men who helped to, to lead the MIC uh, program. So they bring their cohort and they can tell their friends. So it's like an after school kind of hangout. Mm -hmm. And once that continues to go well, we're going to find ways of expanding it into the community so we can touch more young people. But so far, so good. And I'm glad this uh, program is going the way yeah. it is. Yeah. I, I want to know how you guys decided on which masters you choose. Because as you said, like people like Jaiga and you had people from UTC and you had a, a, a wide variety. How did you decide on these men? Men who would have helped in the ministry working in our programs before because we started off doing the LEAP program, which is right. life skills development. So we would have known some of them from the life skill development. And then we have the 40 under 40 program right. yes. where we take uh, young entrepreneurs into the schools to tell young people, to show young people that this whole myth about going to school and getting five subjects and everything would be okay, <laughs> it's not true. So we have the entertainers, the businessmen, the fashion designers, Shapshari, you name it. Mm -hmm. um, we have Candice Guppy Sobian, who would mm -hmm. have done quoted, candy quoted events, yeah. hairdressers, makeup artists, the non traditional uh, programs or, or career paths that if you told your mother that when you were 16 nope. years old, mm -hmm. it would have been a <laughs> no. no. <laughs> but they have excelled. Yes. We have um, uh, different entertainers, pretty. Uh, different people yeah. on mm -hmm. board. Part of it as well. Hands as well. Yes, yeah. yeah. hands as a part of it. Yeah. Also, we have athletes like Cleopatra Burrell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, no, it's a, a 40 and a 40. Yeah. As well. So, we take there. them into these schools, and these young people get to ask them about their journey and the different challenges mm -hmm. and learning roadie, you name it. Yeah. Yeah. We chose from different backgrounds people who were willing to volunteer their time and participate in these schools. So, we met majority of the men from that program who put us in contact with other programs and other men from other programs so we listened out we found Gerald Wilson who was a former commissioner of prison we reached out to the commissioner of police he agreed so we have a nice mix your doctor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's on board uh, we have psychologists on board so it's a nice decent beautiful mix of men it's about take change in the narrative Oftentimes, we are told the bad stories about young people mm -hmm. and young men in our society. And we know that they are positive stories. In my journey in the Ministry of Sport and Youth Affairs, I met young people doing amazing things. So it was about putting the spotlight on those people so that other young people can say, hey, I can be positive too. I can do something with my life too. So it's about that personal engagement where they get to interact and learn from each other's 
experiences. Minister, um, you spoke about some of the topics, but I know you wanted to, you had started to introduce some of the topics that are being covered by Empower. You just want to give us an idea of the breadth sure. of topics. We started with I Am Man, and that's the platform or the foundation dialogue because mm -hmm. it draws out of the young man. What did they tell you about being a man? What do you think being a man is all about? Uh, we have sessions on, on fatherhood, on uh, social responsibility in your community, who you're supposed to be as a young man, as a mentor in your society, uh, your relationships with people in your society. We've covered, sub we are covering substance abuse, mm -hmm. sexual education, grooming hmm. and <laughs> personal hygiene. <laughs> I find it stressed that one a little bit. I love yeah. the plenty there, <laughs> Grooming and personal hygiene. Uh, you name it. Gang violence. Yeah, which is so important. And crime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's critical. Goal setting, mm -hmm. mapping, visioning, entrepreneurship, education. What do you want to do with your life? So we have 12 different topics and then we have an open session just in case you want to talk about something again yeah. or just in case there's a topic we would have missed. And we yeah. think that crime and violence may call for another session so we yeah. left yeah. the space to, yeah. to allow that type of interaction once again. And once uh, we continue to uh, proceed in or make this type of progress, we're going to expand and expand and expand. And right now the program spans Trinidad and Tobago. Right. So we're doing some sessions in Trinidad, some mm -hmm. sessions in Tobago. But we have been having conversations with stakeholders in Tobago to have one exclusively for Tobago mm -hmm. and exclusively for, for Trinidad. What about follow-up? So these young people yeah. would come right. after. Good. Yeah, what right, so I was next? talking about yeah. the, the, the four components. So component one is the M zones. Mm -hmm. where the education. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Component two is life skills training, where we give them a five-week training ah, on nice. different life okay. skills, how to tie a tie, how mm -hmm. to um, eat with a knife and fork. Mm -hmm. you, you name it, all the different things they, they're interested so in. So these ones, the ones that are happening now, these are the one day sessions. Is it the yeah, these are the, the, the educational the ones, yeah. right. So and then we have the second component yeah. that comes yeah. after these 12 sessions, mm -hmm. where we spend five weeks with those who are interested in doing that training for right. five right. weeks. Yeah. Then we have that uh, after covering the five weeks, you should have an idea of what I want to do with my life, where I want to head next. We have a career guidance uh, component that's the third part where we sit with each one. What do you want to do? You want to go back to school? You want to learn a skill? Uh, you want to set up a business? And we put them in, in touch with the different, we have placement officers in the mm -hmm. ministry to help them to get on their feet. Mm -hmm. Then we, the fourth component, involves the eight-week internship where you're going to get an opportunity to experience what is this thing that you've dreamt about yeah. this career or this business plan that you've dreamt about we spend eight weeks with somebody who's already doing it and we've we're offering in that uh, part a mentorship component mm -hmm. and the mentorship can be simply for the eight weeks or the mentors being trained to do it for as long mm -hmm. as they would like, as long as the person, the young man, agrees, uh, or if the person is underage, that their parent uh, agrees. agrees. And the also. age we're talking about is 16 to 29? 16 to 29. So how do young men, I know people are looking at this and probably thinking, how can I get my son, my neighbor, mm -hmm. my friend, or myself? Them for the road. Them for the road. Them for the road. Yes, that's the hashtag. <laughs> Well, they can contact the Ministry of Sports and Youth Affairs and we've made the um, social media very easy and accessible. We have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. We also have Empower TT Facebook page. We have Empower TT Instagram page also. And once you send your message, we respond and get you and in. It. Yes, sir. but for like right now, we have to keep have that 25 okay. for in the room. In the room. Right. But if you want to tune in, anybody, if you're home on a Thursday yeah. evening and you want to tune in, you just log right in. And Thursday, what time? What time is it on Thursday? We start nice. at 5.30. Okay, nice. and, and that's anybody can log on. Yes, you we're get supposed in that to thing? end at 7.30, <laughs> but... Sometimes. So how do you Sometimes. get the link? Once you message, it's, it's sent to you. No, it's, it's available it's on the... Available online. Media. You can oh, just right. go on and click and you're a part of the discussion. That's a good one, yeah. And Minister, are there any plans... Uh, for the individuals who would have benefited from the program mm -hmm. to contribute to contribute toward their communities afterward? Yes, of course, because they would be able to get training through the ministry from the National Mentorship Program, which we are now uh, 
we've done the studies to remodel and we're working on doing the full uh, remodeling by the time we get to that component that would have been completed and we would have trained a first cohort of uh, mentors and once you communicate with the ministry you have a program you have a plan we would work with you to execute it in your in your community the good thing is that uh, many of our stakeholders already have groups in their community and mm -hmm. just looking for the right technical resources to get it going support. and the ministry yeah. is on board to provide that support. Sounds good, good Minister Shabakajo. I think this is such an excellent program. I don't know how you guys feel. Yeah, but I, think I feel empowered. A, I feel like <laughs> we can do, I think, I think we can do a round of applause yeah, kind yeah, of situation. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, re okay. it's really, really sounding extremely inspiring and we just want you to keep us up to date as yeah. to what's happening and, with and, the and program how the impact has up. been because yes. you know we, we see it around us all around us mm -hmm. how you know sometimes that oftentimes in the news you see men being in a negative spotlight for mm -hmm. whatever reasons various yeah. reasons and it's it's very nice to see um enlightening to see a, a program specifically dedicated yeah. to helping young men be the best version of themselves that they can possibly be so congratulations and you know it's not and just I, like a yeah. stop gap it's sort of it begins it's a pop-up plan yeah, yeah, yeah. Well thought i mean i can't yeah. want, I can't lie. I, you want to do it you want to do it no i want to <laughs> ask i want to ask about you know this time we had an into elections and all that mm -hmm. right is yeah. this program set up in a way where it doesn't matter if you continue being the the minister of sport and youth affairs That's that it will question, continue yeah. when i joined the ministry of sport and youth affairs that had been my sole priority. I met a ministry that didn't have strong youth programs. And when I joined the ministry, I remember my first interview with TV6, I said, I came <gasps> from the youth. Yes, they came to my <laughs> office on the day, so <laughs> I had to. Right, they, they asked, um, what's your experience in sport? Uh, yeah. Why are you suited to be the sport minister? And I said, we often forget that this is a ministry of youth and sport. Oftentimes, wherever you place youth, the other part of the ministry drowns it. Yeah. And I said, I came from a youth development background. That's my 40. Sport hadn't been my 40. And that went far yeah. by people saying, oh, she's she not doing sport. sport. <laughs> she but, you know what? sport. But, but the youth development component is equally important. Mm -hmm. yes. Because oftentimes you find social ministry of social development now trying to fix problems that should have been addressed when, when these young yes. people yeah. were coming up. So it's a very and important then the other thing part too of is my like portfolio. Sport and youth sort of have well, some hand sort of, in hand. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we would have a youth program, and the media would come to the program to ask me, okay, so what's going on in sport? Yeah. So. Uh, the whole idea is to bring youth development to the forefront and develop programs that the ministry can carry after I or anybody leave this. We must have a strong youth development agenda. Yeah. The young people of this nation should know this is our agenda. Yeah. And once you have a robust policy and agenda, if the minister changes and you remain adamant, this is our agenda. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, that's the ministry's agenda. Of course, a minister could come in and, and stop a program. Agenda, yeah. But if the staff of the ministry and the youth population and their youth groups are accustomed to this program and they feel touched and inspired by this program, mm -hmm. they would lobby for that program to continue. So we've uh, developed these programs. I'm particularly proud about the LEAP program, which is in life skills, development, mm -hmm. professional, development and getting them ready for the world of work, their personal development also. Then we have the 40 under 40, which had yes. been done for the first time. We yeah. are now into our, fourth, our third cycle of 40 under 40 mm -hmm. and uh, Empower TT. And they have joined the other programs in the ministry and I hope that it outlives me. Yeah. And outlives well, Minister, you. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have you back on. It you, you need to come back on the show again <laughs> uh, as we progress later on to find out how the programs are yes. progressing. But guys, we're out of time. Uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so for much. Having me. Thank, Thank you, you really very much for having me. No Thank no you, problem. Trinidad and Tobago. All right. So we're going to take in a few messages. When we come back, we have our remaining moments on the show here on the Now Morning Show. So stay with us. Mm -hmm.